G'day guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to play Banana Pancakes by Jack Johnson, which is one of his best tunes. Now for the basics of this song, you'll need your guitar in standard tuning and you won't need a capo. If you want to master your chords back to front, then head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to improve in guitar in general, then check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. Alright, let's jump into the lesson. Okay, so I'm going to start off by showing you how Jack Johnson plays this song. And this is the more difficult version because there's bar chords throughout the entire song. So if this is too difficult for you, skip to the second half of this lesson where I'll teach you an easier version of playing this song that sounds just as good and avoids all the bar chords. First off, let's talk about the rhythm on this song. Now this song has a swing feel to it. Now what that means is that the down beats are always held out a little longer than the up beats. So a straight eighth note rhythm would sound like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and notice how everything's even. With the swing feel, the down beats are actually held out a little longer than the end beats, so it'll sound like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and so we'll be using that swing feel throughout the entire song. So let's start with the intro. Now we have two lines of tab here. We're going to start off with the little riff. Now this riff starts on the 2 beat. So on the 1 beat there's no music and we're going to start our first note on the 2 beat. We're going to take our ring finger and hit the 5th fret of the 6th string and slide it up to the 7th. And then we're going to pluck the 5th fret of the 5th string with our index back down to the 7th fret of the 6th string. Then we're going to pluck the 5th fret of the 6th string and slide that down to 3rd. So pluck, slide down, and then we're going to end with the open 6th string. And all together, 1. Notice how there's that swing feel. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Then the next bar, we'll hit the third fret of the sixth string and slide it up to the fifth fret. At this point, we're gonna do a muted down strum. So to do that, you'll take the fleshy bit of your palm and actually put it on the strings as you do a down strum. Now, don't drag your whole hand through the strings. You just wanna make contact with the strings pivot around that point whilst you're doing a down strum. So muted down strum, and then we're going to fret an A minor seven bar chord. So with our index finger already here, just bar across the whole fifth fret with your index finger and put your ring finger on the seventh fret of the fifth string. We'll then do an up strum on that. And that ends the second bar. And in total for the first two bars, Now the third bar is identical to the first bar. One and two and three and four and. But for the fourth bar, instead of an A minor, we're gonna be playing a G7. So hit the third fret of the sixth string, a muted down strum, and then we're gonna play a G7 bar chord. So it's the same as an F bar chord shape, just up two frets, and we're gonna be lifting our pinky finger. So we'll do an upstroke on that as well. So the third and fourth bar, one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and two, and three, and four, and one. In total for the first line of tab. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and two, and three, and four, and Next we move on to the second line of tab. Now, our first lick is a little bit different. We're going to start off that same slide from 5th to 7th, and then we're going to go to the 5th fret of the 5th string, and then up to the 7th fret of the 5th string, back down to the 5th fret, 7th fret of the 6th, and then open 6th string. So that lick, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... Now when I'm picking, I do a constant down, up, down, up, down, up picking motion, but do whatever is more comfortable for you. Now for the second bar, we're just gonna hit the fifth fret of the sixth string, do the muted down strum, and then up stroke on the A minor seven. So the first two bars, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. The third and the fourth bar are identical to the third and the fourth bar in the first line of tap. So it'll sound like this, one and two and three. Now 
we have an extra bar here at the end. So we're gonna hold on to this G7 for the next bar up until the end beat after the one. So one, and so we're gonna do an upstroke there and then a muted down, up. So with the down, up, you can just lift your fretting hand as you transition to the next chord, which is a D7. Now, Jack Johnson plays his D7 like this. He's just focusing on the fifth, fourth, and third string, really, but I prefer playing this D7 because it's easier to transition from the G7. So from the G7, just keep your ring finger where it is. Pinky finger goes onto the fifth fret of the third string, middle finger on the fourth fret of the fourth, and index finger on the third fret of the second string. And we're just focusing on those middle four strings. And what we'll essentially do here is a down, up, down, up strumming pattern, but you'll only push down your fretting hand on the three and the four beat. So just practice the strumming motion, down, up, down, up, but only push down on the three and the four. Three and four and like that. And in total for the final bar, one and two and three and four and. So in total for the second line of tab, one and two. And that's it for the intro in total, which will sound like this. Next we get to the verse which is simple because it's just four chords. The trickiest part about this will be the rhythm and accenting the right beats. We're going to start with a G major bar chord. So it's the same as that G7 but we're now putting that pinky finger down on that fifth fret of the fourth string. So we have G, then we have our D7, our A minor 7, and then we'll finish with the C7. So it's a bar chord with our root on the third fret of the fifth string. And then we'll take our ring and pinky finger and put them on the fifth frets of the fourth and second strings. So that's our C7 bar chord. And those are our four chords. G, D7, A minor 7, C7. The strumming pattern is simple. It will just be a down, up, down, up. So remember to have that swing feel. The down beats are held longer. Now each chord is just going to be held out for half a bar. Now the trick and the magic here actually comes in with a fretting hand. So the fretting hands are not going to be pushing down on the chord the whole time we're strumming. It's only going to be pushing down on the one, two, three, and four beats. Now what I'd suggest you do is just practice with the G chord to begin with. So what you'll do is just start with the strumming motion. So one and two and three and four and. Now start off by having your fretting hand actually just touching the strings. We're not pushing down yet, just have them all in position. Now what you'll do though is actually push down on the one, two, three, four, all right? So one and two and three and four and. And on the end beats, you can temporarily lift your fretting hand. One, two and three and four and. And that's what we're gonna do with every single chord. So once you get the feel for that, we're now going to switch chords every two beats. Now each chord will just be held out for half a bar. So one and two and three and four. Now remember, nothing fancy is going on with the strumming hand. It's just continuously down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's all in the fretting hand. So that's pretty much it for the verse. Now one thing we can do to make this sound even more sophisticated is to just focus on the bass note of each chord the first time you play it. And then the second time you accent it, you focus on the higher strings. So one and two and do that with each chord. Next we get to chorus number one and there's two lines of tab here. So we're going to go back to our A minor 7. Our strumming pattern will change here. It's going to be down, up, mute, up. 
Now to play that muted strum, we'll take that fleshy bit of our palm and we'll have it touching the strings as we're doing a downstroke. Now again, don't drag your palm through the strings. You just wanna lightly touch it and pivot around your palm as you come down with the downstroke. And you'll do that twice for the A minor seven. You, up, down, you, up. Then for the second bar, you'll just hit the root note. Then after that note, we're going to basically play that intro lick that's at the start of the song. Then for the third bar, we play a G or a G7, up to you. I'm just gonna play a G. And we're gonna have that same strumming pattern as the A minor seven. So down, up, you, up, down, you, up. For the fourth bar, we'll hit the root note of that G, hold it out, and then play that lick at the start of the song again. So that's it for the first line of tab, which sounds like this for the chorus. Now for the second line of tab, we're going to slide into an A minor seven. So we're going to hit the third fret of the sixth string and slide it up to fifth. And that will be our downstroke and then we'll continue on the same way that we did for the A minor seven in the first line of tab. So down, up, mute, up, down, up, mute, up. The second and the third bars are identical to the second and third bars in the first line of tab. For the fourth bar, we'll stay on this G chord. We're gonna play a down, up, and then you'll lift your fretting hand and transition to a D seven. And whilst you're doing that, you'll strum a muted down, up. So down, up, down, up. Now remember to get that muted sound, all you need to do is lightly touch the strings with your fretting hand whilst you're transitioning to the D7. And then we'll end the same way that we ended the intro with the D7, so accenting on the three and the four beat with the muted up strum in between. So that's it for the second line of tab, which will sound like this. And chorus number one in total will sound like this. After the first chorus, we go back into another verse and then we get to chorus number two. Now chorus number two is almost the same as chorus number one with the exception of the final bar. So the final bar will just be a full G chord. We won't go to the D7. So we'll just continue on with the down, up, mute, down, up, mute, up strumming pattern. Next we get to the post chorus and this is really simple because it's just that A minor seven for two bars, continuing on with that strumming pattern that we had in the second chorus and then going back down to the G for two bars as well. And we repeat that line of chords through twice. So the post chorus will sound like this. Next we get to the bridge and there's three lines of chords here. We're gonna continue on with this A minor seven for another two bars, and then we go up to a D bar chord like this. You can play this D bar chord with all of your fingers like this, or you could just use your ring finger to bar across the seventh frets of the fourth, third, and second string. So we're gonna play that for two strumming patterns as well. So in total for the first line of chords. And that's played through twice. And then for the second line of chords, we go to a B minor seven. So it's the same as the A minor seven, just up two frets. That's played for two bars. And then we go up to an E minor chord like this and an E minor slash D sharp. So we're just gonna move our index finger down one fret to the sixth fret of the fifth string. 
Now those two chords are contained within one bar. So we're just gonna play each chord with a down, mute, up. And that will sound like this. And then we go down to a C chord, which is the same as our D bar chord, but just down two frets. And we're gonna play this for a full bar and a total for the second line of chords. Then for the final line of chords, we're gonna play a G for one full strumming pattern, D7 for one full strumming pattern, back to our G, and for the final bar, we'll have our G and D7, which is similar to the end of the first chorus. So down, up, mute, mute, three, and four, and... So the final line of chords. And the bridge in total will sound like this. I'll just play the first line of chords through once, but in the actual song, you'll need to play it through twice. After the bridge, there's another verse, then chorus three, which is the same as chorus number two. And then we get to the outro, which is the same as the post-chorus, except for the second line of chords when we get to the G, we're just strumming it, and that's the end of the song. So that's everything for the way that Jack Johnson plays it. Now, if that's too difficult for you, you don't like bar chords, or all that rhythmic stuff is too difficult, then here's an easier way of playing this song. So let's start off with the intro, and again, there's two lines of tab here. So for our opening riff, fifth fret to the seventh, and then up to the 5th fret of the 5th, back to the 7th fret of the 6th string. We're going to pluck the 5th fret and slide it down to the 3rd. And then we're going to end with an open 6th string. So that's the opening lick. Then we'll hit the 3rd fret of the 6th string, slide it up to the 5th. Then we'll do a muted downstroke. So just take the side of your palm and make contact with the strings as you do a downstroke. And then we'll go to an A minor seven chord shape like this and just do an upstroke. So that's the first two bars. Now that opening riff starts on the two beat. So it's one and two and three and four and one and mute and three and four. Now the third bar is identical to the first bar. For the fourth bar, we'll just get into a G chord shape. You'll pluck the root note, do the muted downstroke, and then an upstroke on the rest of the G. So the Third and the fourth bar. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... So the first line of tab in total. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... For the second line of tab, our opening lick is gonna be a little different. So we'll start that slide. 5th fret of the 5th, 7th fret, back down to 5th, 7th fret of the 6th, and then open 6th string. So 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and... Then for the 2nd bar, we'll just hit the 5th fret of the 6th string, do our muted downstroke, and then go to our A minor 7 with the upstroke. So the first 2 bars. 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 4, and... And then the 3rd and the 4th bar, are identical to the third and the fourth bar in the first line of tab. After that upstroke, we're gonna hold that out until the fifth bar, where we're gonna play on the end beat after the one, up, down, up. And then we'll go to a D7 chord, and we'll strum this, and we'll strum this for the rest of the bar at eighth notes. So three, four. So the fourth and fifth bar, one and two. And that's it for the easy intro, which will sound like this.
Next we get to the verse, which is really, really simple. And there's just four chords. So we're going to start with a G chord. Then we'll go to a D7. From the D7, we'll play an A7. So just keep your index finger where it is and move your middle finger up to the second fret of the fourth string. We'll focus on the top five strings there. And then we'll end with the C chord. So we'll take our free ring finger and put on that third fret of the fifth string from the A minor seven. So G, D7, A minor seven, and C. Our strumming pattern here is gonna be really simple. It's just down up at eighth notes. So one and two and three and four and and the point at which we'll change chords is on the three beat. So there's two chords for every strumming pattern, which will sound like this. Next we get to chorus one for this easy version. We're gonna play our A minor seven and we're gonna strum this with a down, down, up, up, down, up for the first bar. Then for the second bar, we'll just hit the root note, which is the open fifth string. And then we'll play the riff that is in the start of the song. So we've already learned that. And the first two bars. And then for the third bar, we'll play a G chord and we'll play that with the same strumming pattern as our A minor, seven. For the fourth bar, we'll start by just hitting the root note of that G and then we'll play that riff at the start of the song. And that's it for the first line of chords, which sounds like this. The second line of chords is almost identical to the first line of chords. The only exception was the final bar where we're strumming the G for half a bar and then the D7 for half a bar. So the final bar. One, two, three, and four. And in total, for chorus one. After that we have the verse which is the same as verse 1 and then chorus 2. Now chorus 2 is basically the same as chorus 1 except instead of going from our G to D7 for the final bar we're just going to continue on with our G for that same strumming pattern. So down, up, down, up, up, down. Then we get to the post chorus which is just two bars of A minor 7 and two bars of G with that same strumming pattern. After the post chorus is the bridge and the bridge has three lines of chords, so again, we're just going to play A minor seven for two bars, and then we'll go to our D for two bars, so that first line of chords. And that's played through twice. For the second line of chords, we're going to play a B minor seven. So this is one of the only few bar chords that is in this easy version. So it's a B minor, but we're going to lift our pinky finger and we're going to strum this for two strumming patterns. Then we take this exact same shape up to seventh and ninth. We're going to play a full E minor here, and then we're going to go down to an E minor slash D sharp. So just move your index finger down one fret to the sixth fret of the fifth string. Now these two chords are within one strumming pattern, so each chord will just be held for half a bar. And then we finish with a C chord and we return back to our original strumming pattern. So the second line of chords. For our third line of chords, it's G for a bar, D7 for a bar, G for a bar, and then G and D7, and they share one strumming pattern. So that's it for the bridge, which sounds like this in total. Now I'll just play the first line of chords through once, but you'll need to play it through twice in the actual song.
after the bridge, there's another verse. Then there's chorus number three, which is the same as chorus two. And then the outro, which is basically the same as the post-chorus. And that's everything for the easier version, which has fewer bar chords and rhythmically is a lot easier as well. So now I'll be doing a full playthrough of the song and have a vocal track on top for some context. A big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals through this playthrough. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you wanna grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzeritohero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.